Hello again, today I decided to try out the one block terraria mod after seeing a few other people try it out as well. And here's what happened. I spawned in and started mining a bit, but then realized that, wait a minute, this mod adds integration with Calamity. So I immediately scrapped my first world, remade my character, and recreated the world once again. I then hopped on with Calamity enabled this time, along with some other quality of life mods that the one block mod recommended I have for the playthrough. I finally started the playthrough by, well, mining. Not really much else I can do when there's only one block in this whole world. I also left my headphones resting on my mouse because I just didn't feel like holding down a button for half an hour while I gather materials. Does that defeat the whole purpose of this challenge? Yeah, probably. Oh well. I used the materials gathered to start expanding the area so it's more than just one block, adding normal grass on one side and jungle grass on the other. Oh yeah, I also made sure to enable Revengeance before adding anything else, although I do end up changing this later. You'll see. Now that I built an arena big enough to where enemies could spawn off screen, I needed to make sure to build a safe base so nothing could easily reach me. A few slime deaths later, and I finally had a safe place to continue mining. Before I continued mining, however, I found a wonderful strategy to get some easy loot. With the quality of life mods that the one block mod recommended, one of those allows you to craft crates, and with those crates you sometimes get enough materials to craft more crates, which can then lead to you getting more materials, and then more crates, and then more materials, and then more crates, and then more materials, and then more crate. I then crafted myself a nice set of silver armor and then continued mining once again. One thing I completely forgot about was the fact that in Revengeance or any higher difficulties, zombies and other enemies can actually open doors, which led to this moment right here. I'm sure you can see why I was so confused when I left the room briefly, base nice and secure, and then came back to see my character just chilling at the bottom of the world, and my base having a bunch of missing blocks. After that mess, I continued doing a mix of crafting tons of crates for loot, expanding the area around me, and mining for some more blocks until I finally got myself full health. I then started focusing more on getting NPCs to move in, while also mining for more blocks in between everything. After I got enough materials, I finally started working on a simple little arena below the base, and before I was able to finish it, I felt an evil presence watching me, so I prepared as much as I could and then faced off against the Eye of Cthulhu. Well, that was easy. A little too easy. So easy, in fact, that I switched the difficulty from Revengeance mode to Death mode right after the fight, before continuing to work on the arena some more. I added more rows of platforms, and then crafted a slime crown to fight the next boss on the list, King Slime. Well, uh, that was 
feel really easy. The spiked slimes after the fight brought my health lower than King Slime ever did. Because I didn't feel like those last two fights were enough of a challenge, I summoned the goblin army right after. After dealing with the goblin army, I started working on lighting up my elevator, as well as finishing lighting up my arena as well. And after lighting up some of the elevator and finishing up the arena lighting, I continued mining. Isn't this just some of the most intense, mind-blowing, amazing gameplay you've ever seen? Truly inspiring. Anyway, once I finished mining, I used the materials I gathered to finally craft a magic storage system to store my 37 lucky horseshoes and 23 star fairies, along with, you know, all my other loot. After that, I continued expanding the island area thingy? Whatever this is, I continued expanding it, where I added an area for corruption, I expanded the jungle arena, and I also added an area for crimson. While I was working on the crimson arena, I noticed a perforator cyst, and well, it wouldn't hurt to try the fight now, would it? That whole fight still felt way too easy. Maybe the reason it felt as easy as it did was because my previous Calamity playthrough was in Infernum. Alright, this next bit is a little bit of a boss rush, so here we go. First off, I fought the Brain of Cthulhu. Next, the hive mind. Then, the Eater of Worlds. I then changed my world from Expert Mode to Master Mode with an item from the Mutant because, once again, I felt like this playthrough was going by way too fast. I then got some better gear and finished up the elevator, also adding a bridge across hell in the process. After the elevator was finished, I crafted a summon for Skeletron, and while waiting for night, I started building an arena in the snow biome. Barely making any progress on it, but oh well, it's a start. Once the night rolled around, it was time to fight Skeletron.
Once Skeletron was defeated, I started looking at any new items that NPCs might start selling, and I found out that one of the NPCs from the Alchemist NPC mod was selling a dungeon teleportation potion. And since I didn't have a dungeon, I was curious where it might teleport me, so I used it. So, uh, I am outside the map. The game is frozen, I literally can't do anything. I can't even recall, I can't even quit the game properly. There's only one option that I unfortunately had to resort to, which is forcing the game to quit with Task Manager and starting the game up again. Looks like doing so reset all of my progress that I had just made, so it's time to do this all again. Let's go! Since I built a mushroom arena this time around, do you know what time it is? Yeah, that's right, it's time for the funny crab, let's go! Once Crabulon was defeated, I farmed him a bit more for the fungus side. And after getting that, I started getting the summons for the final few bosses of pre-hard mode, starting with the slime god. First attempt was very close, but unfortunately still a failure. They also didn't despawn properly apparently, so now they're just falling forever I guess. You know, another funny thing about the slime god fight is that whenever you actually start winning, it really likes to just leave. Because this happened, not once! but twice before I finally ended up beating the slime gun. Right after I defeated the slime god, I began working on an arena in the desert, just so I could get the desert scourge fight out of the way. Placing all the sand took a while, but I was eventually able to finish it up and start the fight. Being this far into the game allowed me to easily beat the desert scourge with no trouble whatsoever. I also fought the old one's army right after, and won somehow. Next up on the list is Queen Bee. I made the summon, started the fight, and well, Queen Bee might be a little angrier than usual since I'm fighting her on the surface, and not underground, but it should be fine. Oh. What I meant to say was, although I was fighting Queen Bee on the surface, it didn't really affect things that much, and I was able to pretty easily win the fight after some time. One of the final bosses before the Wall of Flesh still on the list is Deerclops, and you know, it will be really nice if I didn't have to recreate the snow biome that I already created early in the video that got reset due to one singular potion. Anyway, I finished placing all the snow and started the fight against Deerclops, which I was not aware until this fight that apparently Deerclops has custom Calamity AI now, so I'm sure you can see why I was very surprised when the screen randomly went dark in the corners. Now, I would show this fight like some of the others, but I mean, there isn't really much of a fight to show here, is there? Before fighting the Wall of Flesh, I expanded the world platform, that's what I'm calling it now by the way, all the way to the very edges of the two oceans, mainly because I didn't know if the astral infection risk would spawn correctly or not. Well. Every single pre-hard mode boss has been defeated, and there's only one left. Let's see how well I do.
Yeah, honestly, the fight wasn't too bad. I was able to dodge everything really well, and I didn't really run into many problems along the way. Wait, no! Wait, no! I reached the edge of the world! No! <clears throat> you saw nothing. As I was saying, I beat the Wall of Flesh first try. No problems whatsoever. Nothing went wrong at all. This is definitely the first attempt of this boss. Right away, I noticed that the meteor that carries the astral infection never landed, so I'm guessing the one block mod changed that so that doesn't happen, and materials can only be collected for it with the one block. Before I end off this first part to the Calamity one block playthrough series, I mined for some new materials, and I also fought the Frost Legion. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this first part of the one block series. I'm still working on the Infernum video, so if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more content like this, and well, yeah. See you in the next one.